Recently, David Wood, David S., and I celebrated Muhammad's birthday by asking Muslims why they celebrate Muhammad. Saeed, why are you celebrating Muhammad's birthday today? In other words, why do you like him as a prophet? Instead of vigorous intellectual answers or even heartfelt emotions, we got pornography. You know, let's go ahead and add Ridva. Oh, what a shock, a pornographic image. Welcome to Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dawa. Gay pornography. Whoa, wait a minute. So this is gay porn. And then he Photoshopped our faces on all the gay porn. Like, where'd you get that? It didn't come with your computer. Downloaded that. You took screenshots of that from videos. You had to go and find that. Come on! Why? This might seem like random trolling, but actually. Notice all this stuff connects together. It turns out Islam only exists because of the sexual deficiencies of Muhammad. So, in fact, pornography is a legitimate way to celebrate Muhammad's birthday. It is well known that many Muslims love pornography. Oh, yeah. Indeed, Islam has a long history of producing erotic images celebrating male sexuality intended for consumption by other men. It is also well known that Islam cannot withstand intellectual scrutiny oh, no. and relies on an atmosphere of ignorance to survive. Therefore, perhaps it should come as no surprise that many would-be da'is have to resort to porn jihad to shut down arguments. And as David Wood explains, this is nothing new. I mean, I've been off Facebook for a long time, but this was like, I mean, 10 years ago, I'd just be in a discussion. As soon as you're having any sort of discussion, you criticize Muhammad. Ah, oh, we'll post porn. Ah, oh, look at this porn. Hey, more porn. Porn, 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 porn. You already understand we don't want to watch porn, and you're sitting there posting porn because you, you have a bunch of it stored on your laptop because it's apparently a good thing. And notice, these are people who are trying to defend their religion. It's porn is an actual tool for defending Islam from criticism. It is not one random person. This has been an ongoing thing for years. Hijab isn't far from that. He didn't send he didn't send porn and stuff like that, but he he will use he will, you know, to golden show is golden show. It's the same idea, trying to derail the discussion by creeping everyone out. But let me suggest it's more than a casual coincidence that multiple Muslims showed porn when asked why they love Muhammad. Take Bob. For example, Bob spent considerable time browsing his porn collection to find the perfect gay scene, screenshotting it and staring at an image of a naked man while he photoshopped our heads into the scene. We do have Bob. Oh, never mind. Just another porn jihad. Whoa! Was... I actually saw it. Everyone else didn't see it. Correct. So this is gay porn. And then he photoshopped our faces on all the gay porn. Right. So think about this. This guy has gay <laughs> porn in Photoshop. Uh, that's what this dude is watching. And then he's like, he's got the image in front of his head. Uh, three dudes boning. And he's like, oh, okay, let me Photoshop this. Let me get a picture of these guys from the live stream. Take his faces and put it over there. And he's sitting there editing gay porn. Like, where'd you get that? It didn't come with your computer. You downloaded that. <laughs> You took screenshots of that from videos. You you had to go and find that. <laughs> this is and you know, as someone who has made many thumbnails, sometimes oh. edited details in pictures to make it look like something else. I know that takes a long time. He's literally staring. Yeah, it does. I mean, if you just want, if you just want the head, yeah, if you just want the face and the you know, the, the the get someone's head and and cut out everything around it, so you can that takes some work. He's probably been sitting there for the past. 15, 20 minutes, uh, which which gay porn image for, okay, let me scroll to this part in this, but ooh, that's a good one. Look at these three <laughs> gay dudes on the gay porn off my computer. Ooh, let me take a screenshot of that. Ooh, now let me, that, that'll teach them. 
That'll teach them to talk about Muhammad. I'll show them. I'll show them the truth. And about he did. Religion. Wow. As you can see, his efforts weren't successful. Aww. I can cover up the screen retroactively to prevent the public from ever seeing an image. Incidentally, Christian streamers can drop me an email to learn how that works. Now, we might think Bob was pretty dumb and wasted his time, but I think Bob knew this would happen, knew we'd spend 10 minutes making fun of Muhammad's sexuality, and invoked this reaction to express his love for Muhammad. You see, prolonged exposure to pornography, the kind of exposure Bob is obviously familiar with, can lead to sexual dysfunction. In other words, Bob has difficulty in bed. But he's learned not to be ashamed of that because his prophet had the same problem. Oh la la. The year is 610. Muhammad travels to a cave to perform Tahanuf. Uh -huh. What does that mean? No one is sure but it is clearly connected to pagan mysticism. Now, caves are not the place one goes to find God in the ancient world. They are the place one goes to find demons. Official versions of what happened next are clearly sanitized, but enough details remain to work out the truth. While napping in a cave, Muhammad is attacked by a sleep paralysis demon who squeezes him three times. Every contemporary reader would have understood this story in a sexual manner. A rape by a succubus. Ooh. Muhammad himself recognizes what happened and he tries to kill himself as a man possessed. Sadly, he learns to live with his demon and Islam is born. Yay. With that context in mind, let us examine that first revelation. Recite in the name of your Lord who created created from a clinging substance. That might not sound like anything interesting to the modern reader, but to the original audience, Allah is weighing in on the debate on human reproduction. The prevailing theory of the time was the two-seed theory, wherein the seed of the man and the seed of the woman fought to determine the sex of the child. If the man climaxed too quickly, there wouldn't be enough male essence in his semen, and he would have only daughters. Muhammad had only daughters. Uh-oh. Of course, the theory is nonsense. But Muhammad didn't know that. He was embarrassed that his premature ejaculation could be detected by others. Fortunately, the cave demon told him what he wanted to hear that the alternate one seed theory was true and his inability to produce a male child was unrelated to his sexual deficiency. Thus, Islam, the religion centered around giving Muhammad exactly what he wanted, began. You are probably thinking this is a wild, ridiculous theory, but consider some of Muhammad's other authentic sayings. Muhammad would brag about having sex with all nine or eleven of his wives in one night while taking only one bath. What kind of man goes around bragging about such a thing? The kind who doesn't realize just how disgusting that sounds and is trying to hide his sexual frustration. Nasty. Surah 66 verses 1 and 2 was sent down after Muhammad got caught having sex with his slave girl. <gasps> what kind of man has 11 wives and chooses a slave instead? The kind who's embarrassed by his poor performance, of course, and needs a woman who can't talk back. Numerous ahadith reveal that Muhammad was constantly covered in semen. <laughs> The mystery of how this happened is solved when we realize that Muhammad often had accidents, climaxing before penetration even began. Now, consider this description of Jana. A man from the people of paradise will embrace Zahori for seventy years without getting bored. He has intercourse with her with the strength of seventy men without any semen between them. Ask yourself, what kind of man 
would fantasize about sexual encounters that last years without climax? The answer is obvious. The kind of man who's embarrassed by his own exceptionally quick performance. Bruh. Finally, who could forget Sahi Bakari, 3329? If a man has sexual intercourse with his wife and gets discharged first, the child will resemble the father. And if the mother gets discharged first, the child will resemble her. Obviously, it isn't Muhammad's fault that the children are girls and resemble their mothers, as popular thinking would suggest. But rather, he lasts so long, his wives always climax first. Who could doubt it now? that Allah has spoken. No, indeed. No, indeed. So, as we can see, Bob was in fact not trying to disrupt my stream. He was in fact celebrating the sexually deficient prophet who makes his own sexual problems seem not so bad in comparison. By the way, if you want to see more of David's hilarious response to porn jihadis, Check out Muhammad's birthday live stream here. I put timestamps of the best moments so you can skip straight to what you want to see.